I have a ton mark on it. <sighs> but there was a mark on it and I licked off, so we're good. Welcome back everyone to your series over SQL Server. I'm Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2, and in this video we are going to discuss primary keys. Now, before we start, I had a question for you. Have you ever ordered like some some really delicious food and you eat about 90% of it and there's about 10% left over for leftovers? And it frustrates you because 10% is just enough to make you want more and not satisfy you. <laughs> You're probably wondering, where is this going? Well, throughout the series, I've kind of sprinkled some primary key stuff. So you've gotten a couple pieces of pizza here and there, but now this is the whole pizza. I'm basically putting it all together in one video so you don't have to look through the entire series to find all the details on primary keys. That means a lot of this might be review, but it's all in one spot, so it's a good review. Now, a primary key is a column that is added to a table that allows every single row to be uniquely identifiable. What that means is that every single row has to have a primary key. Not null means that nulls are not allowed. Null is just the absence of a value. In addition to the primary key being not null, every single row has to have a unique primary key or else it wouldn't be able to uniquely identify one of the entities. That means the primary key also has to be unique. You can basically think of the primary key as a combination of not null and unique column attributes or constraints. Lastly, the primary key should never change. There's actually a way in SQL Server to force the primary key column to never allow changes. We will discuss that in just a moment, but for now, let's just think about why. Why is it that the primary key should never change? Within a table, we have a couple columns. It doesn't matter what they are. Let's just say one's a string and one's a number. And then we add a primary key column. So we'll just use a number. So we'll say ID and this will have the ID of seven. So you can tell that this ID points to a specific entity, this one right here. Ooh, squeaky. But now we go ahead and change this seven to an eight, just for some reason. Now this brings confusion because we don't know if the eight is talking about a new entity or it's the same entity with a new number. You might think, well, obviously it's the same entity with just a different ID but maybe it's not so obvious. It's obvious in this situation because we manually changed the number. But if you're just looking at data, you might not have that memorized or know that ahead of time, and it might be a little bit confusing, especially when there's conventions that the primary key should never change, and then you see a change like that, your first thought would be that it's a new entity because primary keys don't change. Therefore, since this one has an eight, huh, must be a new entity. Additionally, there are two categories of primary keys, surrogate keys and natural keys. Surrogate keys are just computer generated numbers. Often this will be some sort of ID. The reason we do this is that it automatically makes it super easy to make the column not null and unique. And actually it's pretty easy to make it never change. Natural keys on the other hand have real world meaning. They are a column that stores actual useful information <laughs> And these columns have to as well be not null, unique, and never changing. Because of that, natural keys are usually a bit harder to come up with. It takes a little bit more thinking, but as a result, you'll often have data that's easier to read because you don't have all of these IDs everywhere you have to connect. Whether you use surrogate or natural keys, that's up to you. I'll probably be using mostly surrogate keys. That's just because I think it makes it easier to make things work. Natural keys can also work well too. It just might take an extra level of thinking. And it's also important to understand that these are categories that we use to make it easier to discuss primary keys, but the database does not know the difference between these two. It's not like you create a primary key and say, oh, this is a surrogate one. Oh, this one's a natural key. You don't do that. You just use primary key keyword. So when you create the database, you're going to say primary key, and you are going to use this right after you create that column. And once we get into the create table statement, that's gonna make a whole lot more sense, but that's literally all you have to do. You don't have to say, oh, primary key surrogate or anything like that. So to summarize, surrogate keys are almost always IDs. Natural keys are something that can uniquely identify a row, but have real world meaning. For example, an email address. 
Oftentimes, you'll want to use either surrogate or natural keys throughout the entire database, rather than switching to surrogate for part of it and switching to natural for part of it. Because then it's kind of confusing because you don't know which tables are using surrogate keys and you don't know which ones are using natural keys unless you dive in and look through the columns. If you're just starting out with database design and you're not required to use natural keys for some reason, I recommend starting out with surrogate keys. That's because it's super easy to make the database create your IDs for you. You don't have to worry about the data changing or anything like that. Now the way we protect the data from never changing is we use what's known as an identity. Now an identity column is a column that automatically gives you a new number every time you insert a new row. Each table can have up to one identity. Also a table can only have one primary key. Because of that it often makes sense that the identity column is also the column labeled as primary key. It does not have to be that way though. You can actually have an identity on a different column. That would only really make sense though if you're using a natural key and you still needed a column that counts for you. In addition to counting, the identity will also prevent you from changing the data. So that is how we protect this one rule of never changing. We make sure that the column is labeled the identity column. When we start talking about primary keys, the concept of indexes needs to come up. Because we've already covered a lot of information and we still have to cover indexes, I'm going to break this up into two parts and in the next video we will be discussing indexes relating to primary keys. So thanks guys for watching this video, hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions just leave a comment, I'll try to help out or someone else can leave a comment and reply. Be sure to click like, subscribe, and as always I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.